And no matter where we live, no matter where we are on planet Earth, we're all sons and daughters of the great God. And no matter where we are, no matter what the climate, no matter what part of the planet we are, we live in a body that's been designed to heal itself. And it will heal itself when you give it the right conditions. Unfortunately today, many are sick because they are unaware of what the body needs to heal. We call ourselves an enlightened age. Is that right? Well, the technology and man on the moon. And, but what about knowledge on how to look after the body? It was on the 8th of December, I was by the beach with my grandchildren, two of my grandchildren, walking on the rocks. And then I stood on a rock that I didn't realise had been wet and it was slippery. My feet went out from under me and my whole body slammed down on my wrist and it hurt very, very much. And when I looked at it, it looked very, very strange. Anyway, to cut a long story to, uh, short, I knew it was beyond a poultice. <laughs> Do you know there is a time for medicine, isn't there? And when the uh, lifesaver looked at my wrist, she said, you, you've got to go to hospital, you've got to go to hospital. Yes, the bone was sticking like this and it was in inc incredible pain. One of the things that people have forgotten to do is listen. Listen to what their body is saying. Now, it's easy to ignore little taps. Isn't that true? Well, this was more than a little tap. This was a sledgehammer. Now, I thank God that he doesn't show us the future. I thank God that when I went into emergency, I didn't know that I was going to sit there for six hours. Praise God I didn't know. Now, the reason I sat there for six hours is the whole system was clogged up with people who had a sore finger, a sore toe, my heart rate's gone up, uh, my blood pressure's gone up. One lady said, oh, I feel sick. The nurse said, have you been drinking? Well, just a few. And so I sat there in the most excruciating pain thinking, I can't believe it. For six hours, I watched these people come and go. And they all sat around chatting as if they're waiting for the bus while I'm in the most excruciating pain. My husband ended up going to the nurse and saying, my, my wife is in a lot of pain. They said, she's on the fast track. I'd hate to be on the slow track. As I sat there, I was confronted with a couple of things. I was confronted with the fact that we have come to a time on planet Earth where people do not know how to look after their bodies. Yes, we might be able to go to the moon. Yes, we might be able to be pretty smart on technology. And by the way, I'm not. <laughs> I need a teenager. <laughs> but we don't know how to look after our bodies. I'd like to suggest that we are not the age of enlightenment. I think that we're the age of ignorance. Uh, gravy fell on my hand. Uh, eh? We don't even know how to look after a burn. And I think one of the reasons my information has exploded is because people have been confronted with the fact that in 2020, in Australia, in some hospitals, you could not go in unless you were vaccinated no matter what your problem. So people became confronted with, I've got to find out something about this body that I live on. It's time. In fact, I'd like to say, suggest it's long past time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. A time to 
to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to love and a time to hate. There is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. We're long past time in knowing how to look after our bodies. Long past time. So I get a lot of messages from mothers. What can I do? My child's got a fever. I said, fantastic. (laughs) Did you know fever's your friend? Fever's a wonderful thing. Fever has a purpose. And every, every child on the planet's had a fever. What can I do? My child's got strep throat. What's this strep throat? Have you heard of this strep throat? We used to call it a sore throat. Strep throat. And the, I said, it's just a sore throat. And the mother says, yeah, but I'm told that it might get to the lungs, it might get to the brain. Where'd that come from? A lady said to me, my little boy, he's five. He runs around everywhere and he's just lying in bed. He's got a fever. I've taken him to the doctor. You know what I say? Why? Why'd you do that? I never took my child to the hospital. I never took to them to doctor. Because we live an incredible body with an inbuilt ability to heal itself. And Proverbs, sorry, not Proverbs, Psalms. Psalms 146, verse 3, it says, Put not your trust in princes. Who are the princes? The authorities in the field. It doesn't mean you don't go to them. I went to them. I'm very thankful for the, for the skill of the orthopedic surgeon that pulled my radius that was broken and out of place into alignment. Praise God for the skill of the orthopedic surgeon. I praise God for painkilling medication that they were able to totally put a block on my arm so that I didn't feel it when he pulled it into place. Praise God for these skills. But not for a fever, not for a strep throat. Put not your trust in princes. Why do I say that? Because when the prince says, if you don't take antibiotics for the strep throat, it might go to your lungs, it might go to your brain. Do you know what my husband says? I don't believe it. The lady said to him one day, Michael, look at my test. He says, oh, I don't believe that. Michael said, but the lady said to Michael, but Michael, that's my test. He said, yeah, but that could be wrong. Did you hear that? Put not your trust in princes. Yes, go to them. But then say, thank you so much for your advice. I'm going to seriously consider this. And you go home and maybe as you're walking out, you might say, don't call me, I'll call you. (laughs) Because God's government is a government of freedom and freedom is based on free choice. I am the master of my destiny. I am the one that chooses what I do and what I do not do to my body. It's my God-given right. Don't let anyone take that away from you. And it's their parents' God-given right what they do to their children. So when I get a call from a from a concerned father, he said, he said, We're we're up in the mountains, we're traveling down to the city. Because our little two-year-old girl, her finger got caught in the door when it shut and she pulled her hand out and left the tip of her finger. They got the tip of the finger, they raced to the doctor. He said, ah, that's too dirty, we can't use that. You'll have to go straight to the big hospital. She's going to have to have all her vaccines. At that point, she hadn't had any. Because these parents believed that we live in a body with an inbuilt ability to heal itself. Does God make mistakes? No. They said, you'll have to go to that hospital. She'll have to be fully vaccinated. She will have to have a skin graft taken from behind her ear. It'll have to be sewn on her finger. And on the way down, they rang me. They had heard that I raised eight children without drugs. They'd heard that I... I raised eight children without taking them to the doctor, and guess what? They're all still alive. (laughs) And they're doing the same with their children, 24 grandchildren. Sorry, 24 and a half. One's one's coming in October. 
Why do they do it? It works. Why did I do it? It works. We live in a body that works. So I said to the parents, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what I'd do. I said, I would not go to the hospital. I would go, when you get to the big town, go to a nursery and buy an aloe vera plant. Did you know that aloe vera contains a growth stimulant? If you have an aloe vera plant, and I hope you do, every home should have one. In fact, when I go into a new home, that's the first thing I plant, aloe vera and comfrey all around the house. My husband is not keen on plants, and we're actually building a, about to build a new house. He said, it's a plant-free zone. I said, well, it'll have to be a wife-free zone. <laughs> oh, he says. All right, a few plants. <laughs> If you have an aloe vera plant and you cut the tip, just the top, maybe half an inch off, and then you watch, within one hour, a skin will grow because it contains a growth stimulant. And that stimulant causes rapid healing in the tissues of the body. I said, go and buy an aloe vera plant, split it open, keep the skin intact, and put that, bind that around the child's finger with the skin intact, because if you take the skin off, it can dry out. You don't want to dry out. I said, if you can keep that finger moist, it will grow. Did you hear that? Let's continue. And then I said, buy a rubber glove, cut a finger off the rubber glove. (laughs) Not the child. (laughs) And put that over that finger. And you must keep it moist. They said, righto, they liked the sound of that better than what the hospital was offering. The doctors in the hospital rang them half an hour later and said, where are you? I said, be very careful what you say, because they do have the right to make your child a ward of the state if they don't feel you're looking after the child. Don't, whatever you say, alter it. Say, we're getting another opinion. Got that? And it's your right. We're getting another opinion. Well, they did what I said. I said, when I get off the phone, I'm going to run down the paddock. You call it a field, is that right? By the end of these few days, you'll get used to my words, I guess. I'm going to dig up some comfrey. Comfrey is another herb that contains a growth stimulant. Never put it in your garden because your garden will turn into a comfrey garden. It's got a growth stimulant. It, 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 It grows rapidly. It's also called knit bone. It has the ability to stimulate cell growth in bone, in tissue, in ligament, in tendon, in skin. So I went down the paddock, dug it up, washed it, put it in an express post pad, and I, po- I posted it to them. And I said, the, I said, only dress it every 24 hours, just Just leave it for 24 hours. The hardest time for the child will be the change of the dressing. Get everything ready and do it swiftly. The child was only two and a half. The mother said she couldn't do it. The father did it. (laughs) He used to work in search and rescue, so he was was used to this sort of stuff. Anyway, um, that's what they did. And they kept it moist. And after eight weeks, the fingerprint returned. If you look at her hands today, I think she's 17 today, uh, the fingers are the same size. I said, keep that fingertip in the freezer because no one will believe you. (laughs) What an incredible body we live in. Don't underestimate what the body can do. Psalm 104 verse 14, the Bible says that God gave herbs for the service of man. I love that verse. The, The herbs come along and say, Where would you like me? What would you like me to do? Medicine calls it synergism, working with the needs of the body. Whereas drugs come along and say, get out of my way, I've got a job to do, whether you need it or not. Drugs are like robots, I must do, whether you need it or not. Yes, in a crisis, a drug can save a life. Yes, in a crisis, I was thankful for the block on my arm that I didn't feel. But that was one day, not since and not before. 
It's not the odd day you do it, and it's not the odd day you don't. It's what you do every day that, that has the effect on the body. So that young girl, her finger now looks a little funny. <laughs> You've got to look closely to see. It's a bit different to the other fingernails, but it grew. So I hope you all have comfrey around your house or somewhere, not in your garden. And also aloe vera. It's one of the best things that you can use for burns. So this family, they, whenever there's a problem, they call me. And they, they called me a few years later. Their son, he was dismantling an old house. They were getting windows because they were building a new house. And he was pushing this window out and he overbalanced and his hands went through the window. And he had deep lacerations. So they rang me from the hospital. Barbara, what do we do? I said, he's a pianist. You've cut through uh, tendons. Praise God for the skill of the surgeon. Because those tendons go twang. <laughs> you want to pull them together and stitch it. And he's 19. He's a pianist. No. Anyway, they went into the hospital. After a half an hour, they rang me. They said, we've got a problem. I said, what's the problem? They said, well, no surgeon will operate on him unless he takes antibiotics. And this young boy, Joel, said, nope, nope. They said, Barbara, what do we do? I said, well, the body can cope with one or two courses of antibiotics in a lifetime. And he hasn't had an antibiotic. And it was a dirty old window. So they went to Joel and said, well, Barbara said maybe. He said, nope, nope, no. So 11 medical people talked to him. You got it. You're a young man. You know what they started to say? You, you're going to lose your hand. You're going to lose the ability to play the piano. Never should we make a decision on this one. Fear. And you know what God said? In 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You know what a sound mind does? It considers the options. Finally, they found an orthopedic surgeon that said, okay, I'll do it. And you know what they do when you're under general anaesthetic? They get hydrogen peroxide, and did you know that's what your white blood cells kill pathogens with? Did you know that, that our body makes hydrogen peroxide inside the white blood cell? They, they pour the hydrogen peroxide on and they just about get a scrubbing brush. Because <laughs> you've got to clean it up, that's square one. So they cleaned it up very, very well, and they can, especially when you're under anaesthetic. And often they'll put iodine on it. And iodine, of course, is another natural one. Isn't it interesting that some of these natural basics they're still using? Because they work. And they stitched, they stitched his, his uh, tendons together, stitched him up, and then they bound him up. And then they sent him back home, because he's about five hours from Sydney, tw for 48 hours, not to touch it for 48 hours. You know why they do that? And you know why I said don't change it? Because if you change it too often, you disrupt new cell growth. And so the time came, 48 hours, and they undid the dressings, no swelling, no redness, no infection at all. See, often they give it just in case. And his mother was blending up all the wild greens in the garden. Let me show you why. This is human blood, and human blood is very similar to plant blood. There's the molecular structure of human blood. Here's the molecular structure of plant blood. Looks pretty similar, doesn't it? So human blood, the middle molecule is iron. The only difference with plant blood is the middle molecule is magnesium. So one of the, one of the best blood cleansers you can use is green juice called chlorophyll. Or just blend up the wild greens in the garden. Uh, barley greens, uh, super greens, 
Wheat, wheatgrass shots, all of that. It's one of the best blood and tissue cleansers. And poor Joel, it, it was almost coming out of his ears. His mother's giving him all of these green drinks and certainly giving him peak nutrition because th those greens, they clean up, clean up the blood. He healed and he healed beautiful, beautifully. And you know what was beautiful about this story is these doctors and their nurses got a testimony of a young man that said, no, I, I, I live in a body with an inbuilt ability to heal itself. And it will heal itself when you give it the right conditions. And he knew he was giving it the right conditions. So I admired this young man's stand. And it worked. Leviticus 17.11, it says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And when you think about it, and when you understand what is in the blood, that's all we need for healing. The blood contains red blood cells and white blood cells. They're our internal army. So the red blood cells, they're the carriers of oxygen. Oxygen, the most vital element needed for life. Water. We need water to rinse, to cleanse, to hydrate the whole body, every cell. The red blood cells can carry, can carry nutrients. Our body cannot function and our body cannot heal without nutrients. It's like Michael and I. We're going to build a, another house. We've got a big property and... We've got a health retreat and we get probably 16 to 18 guests every single program, three weeks a month. And we've got a lot of staff, so sometimes you need to <laughs> build some more accommodation. And we've got four sons. They're all tradesmen. And let's say we say, can you come and build a house? And they come and they've got their tools and they're master craftsmen because they've been brought up in a home where honesty and integrity is of the utmost importance. Yeah. Utmost importance. And they say, where's the building materials? And we say, oh, sorry, we couldn't afford them. Can they build a house? How can we expect our body to be rebuilt? And by the way, it's constantly being rebuilt unless we give it the nutrients that it needs to rebuild. And many are sick today because they're suffering from malnutrition B. Have you heard of that one? Malnutrition A is when there's just no food. Malnutrition B, the person is usually quite overweight, but there's no nutrition going into the body. And when I look in some fast food shops, I think, whoa, how, how will anyone that eats this, how will they ever hear? It's like asking our sons to build a house, but we're not supplying the building materials. Our building materials is the food we're eating. That's the nutrients. The red blood cells do something else. They take away the waste. And we're living machinery. And all machinery has waste. What a perfect design. So when we're sick, do you know all we need is more blood? More blood. You, you've got five different types of white blood cells and some of them are the scouts looking for a problem. One of them, the neutrophils, that's the one that comes in and it surrounds and gives the hydrogen peroxide out and, and dies in the process. Then you've got the monocytes that come and take the waste away. It's an incredible process inside the human body. If you give your body the right conditions, it will heal. But there are many people today that are sick. And there are many people today who run to the princes a little too soon or listen to the princes. That's why Psalm 146 verse 3 says, Put not your trust in princes. Who should we put our trust in? In the great God of heaven. And many people make the decision because of fear. It takes one minute for one drop of blood to go around the whole body. Blood that's carrying the life. Carrying the healing. But we're going to make sure we're breathing 
through our own personal air conditioner, our own personal air purifier, and our own personal air humidifier. It's called nose. Mouth is for eating, drinking, singing, and speaking, and wind instruments and whistling. But nose and nose alone is for breathing. And when we breathe in and out only through our nose, then our blood has got better oxygen. In Genesis 2 verse 7, the Bible says that God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. Did you get that one? This was not mouth to mouth. Breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. Nostrils. So when we go to Psalm 146, verse 3, where the Bible says, Put not your trust in princes, neither in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. And then the next verse tells you why. His breath goes forth, he returns unto his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. In other words, he's just a man. He's a perishable man. And if he gets knocked over by a car tomorrow, he's going to return under his earth, and in that very day his thoughts perish. Look at verse 5. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob as his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God that made heaven, earth, sea, and all that therein is, that keeps truth forever. And that's what I'm interested in, truth. Because God is a God of truth. He's the God that made the body. He's the God that made the fear. I mean, he's the God that said, I did not give you fear. So there are two main systems of healing in the world today. One is based on fear and the other one is based on faith. And many people run to the princes too soon because of fear and do what the princes say because of fear. That's why God says, I've not given you the spirit of fear but of power. Isn't knowledge power? I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind considers the pros and cons. And the amount of people that have come to our retreat and said, if only I'd had time to consider. And you might have just been told, oh no, we've just done a test. You've got this, the label. Do you know you don't have to take that label on? Do you know they could be wrong? Did you know that 25% of people who get diagnosed with Parkinson's, it's actually a wrong diagnosis? Mm. And our body is subject to the mind. One lady said that her doctor said she had three months to live. She said, you're not God. <laughs> Only God knows when, how long I've got to live. And isn't that true? See, total rejection. Put not your trust in princes, neither in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob as his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven, earth, sea, and all that therein is. What's it that does that include? Us. (laughs) All that therein is that keeps truth forever. So God said, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The other one is based on faith. And Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Hope, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, it's not faith. So for six weeks, this hand was in plaster. I thought I'd never, ever... Use this arm again. Don't you think that at the time? But what did I have to have? Faith. Faith in a body. And look, it works. It's healed. (laughs) An orthopedic surgeon said to me one day, he said, Barbara, we can set a bone. We cannot heal a bone. Isn't that true? So when the orthopedic surgeon was about to pull this into line, I said, my husband's praying for you. And God was good. He pulled it into alignment. (laughs) They put the plaster on and he pulled it again. And they x-rayed it and he came out and he said, pretty good. I said, that's enough for me. So they put two plasters on now to allow for swelling. 
So within a few days, I cut one off and got the comfrey. And every day, and you know, the easiest way to do it, and not everyone likes this way, you just put it in your mouth and you chew it up till it comes gooey and then put it on. Oh, I told you I'm a bushy. <laughs> now, if you want to be civilised, you could do a mortar and pestle, but nothing does it like chewing it. <laughs> just tastes like grass, not going to kill you. Might get a few green things stuck in your teeth. Might help to heal your dental problems. <laughs> It's got a growth stimulant in it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And faith and hope are inseparable companions. Hope sees the invisible, feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. What an incredible body we live in. So after four weeks, when I had another x-ray and they had to do a bit of a change in the in the pastor, they were quite surprised that a 70-year-old woman's bone that was totally broken, out of alignment, had healed. Mm. And, the, and, the, and the nurse that changed it, he said, uh, do you have osteoporosis? I said, no. He said, have you had a test? I said, no. <laughs> and he laughed, and I realised that did sound a bit silly. But if my body went up in the air and slammed on this wrist with a rock under me, I think I've had osteoporosis, there would have been more than a broken wrist. They kept saying, is there anything else? I said, nah, that's just this, just this. And I know I have strong bones because you know what I do? I do everything that's necessary to maintain those strong bones. No, I don't drink cow's milk. How does the cow get the calcium? From grass. grass. I've got some good news. You don't have to eat grass. <laughs> you can eat kale and salad and rocket. And if the children won't eat it, the easiest thing to do, you haven't fed them for a few hours, sit them down at the table and start with the greens. <laughs> and then when they've finished most of the greens, make a nice dressing, smile the whole time. Then you bring the potatoes and all the, the good stuff. So let's look at three, these two systems. This system is based on a theory. And notice it's a theory. It's the theory that we evolved. I have, two sis, I have three sisters. Two of them are scientists. One's a creationist and one's an evolutionist. And when they get together, they talk about the weather. <laughs> Otherwise, they might not even want to be in each other's presence. But you know what God gave us? He gave us the incredible honour and ability to choose what we do to our bodies and what we believe. But do you know the Bible says that we are accountable to God, actually, for what we do to our bodies? In 1 Corinthians three sixteen and 17, the Bible says, Know you not that ye are the temple of God? And the Spirit of God lives in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Ooh, that takes a little bit higher, doesn't it? And then in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, he starts, the same author starts with this. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus. You were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God. So we actually have no right to beat it up. And by the way, if we beat it up, we're pretty sorry, aren't we? And when we give it the right conditions and it works well, who's the winner? We are. That's right. So this theory that we evolved is compared to another, which I don't call a theory. It is fact. The Bible says that we were created in the image of God. What an honour. And so these New Testament verses that say, yeah, the temple of God, Ooh, 
What an honor. So if the Bible says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. That's 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Does God destroy? Well, he doesn't have to. We do a very good job of it. Yeah? It's actually called cause and effect. And in... Galatians 6 verse 9, the Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. The problem today is there's a great deceiver out there that has deceived people into thinking, Oh, this isn't going to really hurt me. And the first cigarette doesn't give lung cancer. Hmm? But, and the first drip from the tap doesn't cause a hole, does it? But little by little... In one of my meetings, I said, 50 drops, you're starting to get a dent. My husband took me aside. He said, <clears throat> Barbara, 5,000 drops later, you'll get a dent. You see, my husband's a mathematician, so I have to be mathematically correct. <laughs> no, this, this, uh, this is the truth that we were created in the image of God. This theory states that because we evolved, we cannot heal. And because we cannot heal, then drugs are necessary. This is a great deception. And in the little book, one of my first health books called The Ministry of Healing, on page 127, it says the only hope of better things is the education of people in right principles. Because so many people are sick through ignorance. The next sentence says, let the physicians teach the people that restorative power lies not in drugs, but in nature. Did you hear that? Let the physicians teach the people. Does your physician teach you that? That's why I believe God meant each one of us to be our own doctor. Because only you know how you feel, only you know what you've been through, and only you know how your body responds or reacts. So when I was going through that terrible pain, no one could feel my pain. <laughs> but you could tell I was in pain. No one can feel your pain, but you know. That's why the best health professional will do this to you. They will listen. Have you ever been to a doctor who won't listen to you? It's very frustrating, isn't it? Don't be that doctor. And if you don't listen to the first whisper, your body's going to start screaming. And when it starts screaming, it's doing damage. Got that? Listen. I find most people that have had injuries in time past and now got problems, it's not because of the injury. It's because they didn't listen and stop and rest <laughs> and let it heal. Only us know, only, only we know about you've pushed it too far. You know, when someone starts massaging my shoulders, it hurts and I go, oh, keep going, that hurts but it feels so good. But then there's another pain where it's, oh, don't touch that. That's why you have to listen. And these are the voices of God in the body. This system states that we were created in the image of God with an inbuilt ability to heal itself. And if we crash on a rock like I did, I thank God that he's given us herbs. And these herbs work with the healing powers of the body. This is the truth. So there are two systems, and again, we choose. We choose which system we abide by. So I raise my children without drugs. I raise them in a rainforest. And I remember one day my daughter, Emma, was, was splitting kindling, and someone called out, and the, and the tomahawk went on her finger. So what do we do? Oh, we just cleaned it up. It's a bit of common sense there, isn't there? You know, common sense isn't very common today. Yeah, of course you've got to clean it up. Cleaned it up really well, pushed it together. Did you hear that? Pushed it together, 
put some comfrey cream on it and then bound it up and made a splint and held it there. And I don't think she's hardly even got a scar today. And so this family with the child, with the, the finger, they rang me. It was, a, it was probably two years ago now and they said, a friend of ours has been burnt. The, the, the boiling water went on her chest and on her arm. The skin was falling off. They took her straight to the doctor and the doctor said, you have to go to the big hospital in Sydney, five hours away, and they will do a skin graft to uh, sew new skin on there because there was a patch area where it had gone through the three layers and might never use the arm again. So she rang my friend, the mother of the child that the finger chopped off, and she said, no, no, we've got a lady, we think she can help. And I could see them the next day and we met at my friend's house. I noticed my friend had this huge patch, maybe a quarter of this stage of aloe vera. And when I got there, there was about ten people there, everyone's watching, and the husband was standing there like this. You see, he had fear because the prince had told him that if you don't go down to Sydney and have this skin graft, you might lose the use of your arm. See that, that, that fear. What does God want us to have? His faith. But we've got to do the right things by the body. I'd already said the day before, get her to put aloe vera on her chest. What you do is you've got the aloe vera leaf like this. And yes, common sense tells us to cut off all those prickles. And then you cut it down the middle like that, so now you've got two of that shape. And just put them on the chest with the skin intact. Because if you leave the skin intact, the edges don't dry out. If the edges dry out and the aloe vera sticks, when you try and get it off, it rips the skin. But you leave the skin intact, the edges will not dry. The skin keeps it dry. So we... We picked a whole lot of aloe vera and on the skin we basically made like a jigsaw. See like this? So you make like a jigsaw and because it's so slimy I was so glad to have a lot of people there because we had a lot of hands to hold it because it's slipping. And then we wrapped the whole thing with cling wrap so the cling wrap's not touching the skin. And we did these big slabs of aloe vera with the skin intact on her arm. Did the whole arm, even the bits that weren't even burnt, didn't matter. You just want as much as possible. And then we bandaged it. And then we prayed. We said, Father in heaven, you gave us a body with an inbuilt ability to heal itself. Father in heaven, thank you for aloe vera. Thank you for aloe vera and how it cleanses, how it nourishes, how it heals. And we, in the name of Jesus, thank you. The husband's, the husband's arms weren't folded anymore. That told me he's relaxed a little. And I smiled at him. I said, I've seen it work. I've seen it work. He nodded. See, they had little twin boys who were two. He had to work at... There was a whole lot of stresses in the home, but he had fear because of what the doctors had said. I said, do you know that this has a growth stimulant and I believe that it will heal. Can you see that God's method is based on faith? We couldn't see it healed yet. We needed faith. Faith in an incredible God that gave us the body that will heal. Faith in the simple things he's given us, in things like the aloe vera, and in some cases like the comfrey. And we put the slabs across her chest. She said, well, I already have felt the relief, but they were worried about this because of what the doctor had said. I said, don't change it for 24 hours. After 24 hours, get someone to help you. And we gave them heaps of aloe vera. <laughs> you can get cut heaps of it and put it into a bag in the fridge. And I didn't hear anything else. I was busy. I was an hour away. 
One year later, I'm in the local town and I'm about to go into a shop and they came out and as soon as they saw me, the husband and wife, their faces lit up. She pulled her her jumper up and said, look, look. (laughs) I couldn't see a mark. I couldn't see a mark. And the husband's there like this. Nodding, he said, we, we don't know how to thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank God for this incredible body. 